It's comics great. The visual. It's comics are great. The visual storytelling show. We're back, everybody. Man, I'm tripping right, right on the on the starting line. Uh, the visual storytelling show recorded live every other week at the Ann Arbor District Library in lovely downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan. Comics.aadl.org, and this is the show where we talk about uh, making comics, what goes into writing comics, uh, the comics lifestyle. All the things that go into uh, the world of comics uh, from the standpoint of people who make them and the people who enjoy them so much. And my name is Jersey Jones, cartoonist and teaching artist, and I'm alone in the studio for our return to regular updates. But thank goodness, uh, I have a friend, one of my favorite people in the entire world, who is staying up late on the other side of the planet. Mr. Ryan Estrada is here of RyanEstrada.com. Hey, Ryan, good to have you back. How you doing? Oh, good. I'm tired. I'm tired after right. Kids Read Comics Weekend, as I'm sure you're tired because you're. It's what two in the morning, one thirty in the morning. It's your time. One thirty. I'm. Uh, I'm skyping in from the future. <laughs> one thirty a.m. Thursday. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. We I, I forgot to mention the show is recorded uh, or broadcast live at twelve thirty p.m. Eastern Time Wednesdays. Uh, Eastern Time though, the only time zone that people really uh, care about. But but you're 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 uh, you're in South Korea right now, Busan. Yep, Busan, South Korea. <laughs> so, okay, so let's let's give people a quick introduction to what you do and and what you're going to talk about today. Let's see. This year, can we go through the list of all the stuff you've done this year, Ryan? Go for it. You got it in front of you. I'm pulling it up now because this is just outrageous. All right, yeah, so I, I would rattle it off, but I honestly don't remember myself. <laughs> Not a lot of things. <laughs> okay, so this year, okay, I'm reading off of your Google Plus page. Uh, so far this year, I have. Completed a 160-page graphic novel, done editing and graphic design for two anthologies, illustrated a 31-page children's book, created an, created an eight-page comic book for Universal Records, a 12 com, a 12-page comic book for a travel expo. Is that right? Yeah. And then created several how-to comics. You know, the the, the learn Korean in what was it, 15 minutes? Which actually yeah. that comic works. You know, when by the time you finish the comic, you can read Korean. Um, illustrated 10 posters and close to 100 pages of other various projects. And that's all while acting in a play, doing regular stand-up comedy, running two businesses, moving to a new country, all while still taking three international vacations and still having one of the most relaxing years of my life. How in the world did you do this, Ryan? Did you make a deal with the devil? I think you did. Well, it's just, you know, here in the future, we know, <laughs> we know all the ways, the tips and tricks to speed through this stuff. <sighs> and I've been doing a lot of... I've been... I've had the advantage of uh, when I was working on the cartoon commune, I'm doing commissions and stuff, having to do uh, like uh, a lot of things that I wanted to get over with quickly. Like my last graphic novel, Aki Alliance, took me like seven years to finish because I kept going over everything and trying to make it perfect and you know not using any shortcuts. But then when I started doing all these commissions, I had to learn how to speed through them so I could get back to doing the stuff that I enjoyed doing. And then I I start started figuring out how to use some of those techniques in the things that I'm doing for myself and still make it something that I'm proud of. And you did a post on Twitter several months back uh, where you said, who just colored 158 Photoshop files in 30 minutes? This kid, that's who. And it, when I read that, I was like, whatever, Ryan. I mean, I know you to be an honest guy, but come on. It's got to be an exaggeration. But, but then you said that you've got like these, this, this array of automation tricks that you've done with Photoshop to do this. You spelled it out to me in an email, but it just sounded like it sounded crazy. So I, I'm wondering if you could demo it on the show today. So this is where I'm going to say to anybody who's listening in the audio, really, this is one where you really want to watch the video. We do a video and audio podcast for this show. And you can get the, uh, the video shows either at comics.aadl.org in the post for this episode, which would be at comicsagreat.com slash CAG59. Or you can find it on the YouTube page at uh, youtube.com slash comicsagreat. So I wonder if we should kick into you know this demo of speeding this stuff up and coloring 158 Photoshop files in 30 minutes. All right, let's do it. Yeah, I've got um, the exact book that I was working on and the exact pages that I was working on when I did that. Um, so I'm going to show you how I did it. I'm not going to open all 183 or whatever because I don't want my computer to crash in the middle of this. <laughs> but um, uh, let me um, kick into screen sharing here, and I'll show you what I'm doing. Um, share screen. People in the chat are all poised. All right. 
Um, this is, can you see the? It's my loading. Screen? It's loading right now. All right. It always takes a, a second. Even with crazy, awesome Korean internet, which I, I have deep, deep uh, admiration and jealousy of, uh, still takes a second on our end with our slow American pipeline. Mm -hmm. Well, um, what, I'm, what I'm booting up here is uh, my new graphic novel, The Kind, which is the one I started working on it in January and just kind of worked on it part-time in between all the other projects I was doing. Um, and uh, nothing yet? No, it still hasn't loaded. I want to give it another try, like switch back to you and then switch back to the, um, the screen sharing. Sometimes that works for me when I'm doing this. Okay. Yeah, cause now I can see you just fine. And I should say that I finished reading The Kind recently as part of the whole story collection, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, really, really good book. Really, really... Uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's, uh, it's, it's not a comedy horror. It's not a comedy drama horror. God, it's, well, I would, it's weird. Yeah, well, I was trying to do um, a thing that a lot of Korean movies do, uh, which is just suddenly change genres to make like a point, which mm -hmm. is something that American movies are really afraid to do. And uh, I just wanted to kind of like play with the audience and have them like think, go into it thinking it's going to be one kind of book and then accept, oh, okay, it's this other kind of book. And then all of a sudden, oh, wow, this is something that totally different from what I thought either time. And it does do that. People are saying in the chat, there's, there's a bunch of people chiming in saying how much they enjoyed it. But yeah, it does. It takes a, a very rapid shift at one point from where you think it's this kind of story and it, it quickly becomes, whoa, it's that kind of story. And then it shifts again. Uh, really, really good book. We're going to do uh, an audio commentary of it in the near future. I'm really looking forward to, to talking about it in, in more detail with you. Uh, it's still not loading up on the screen, Ryan. I don't know what's still going nothing. on. Um, yeah. That's... Hmm... Let me undo this one more time. Stop sharing screen. <laughs> you can see me now, right? Yep, see you just fine. And share screen. Start. Now we see your cartoon commune avatar while we're getting a load spiral. Well, anyway, while we're waiting for that to load, I'll just start in like with... The first thing I want to talk about, the way I speed things up, is just three little rules that I have before I even start. Um, and one of them is I never work a page at a time, which is what I used to do when I was doing Aki Alliance. Um, I was posting online as I was doing it. I would draw a page, post it, draw the next page, post that. And then once I started like drawing a chapter at a time, I realized that it took me the same amount of time to draw a chapter as it did a page. Mm. Because... Um, well, first of all, like most of the time I spend working on comics is like getting into the, uh, you know, you got to get in the creative zone to do it. And then just when I'm working on a chapter, like I'll just go through and pencil the whole chapter at once, ink the whole chapter at once, and then use all the automation tools. And, you know, when, when Photoshop's doing all the work, you, it, it, like I said, it takes the same amount of time for it to do 100 files as it does to do one. So... I always do at least like a chapter at a time. Um, and the other rule is that I never force myself to work when I'm not feeling into it. Like if I wake up and like I just really don't want to draw today, I'll sh shut off my computer and go to the park. Because uh, it. whenever I force myself to draw, I always end up redrawing it the next day because I don't like what I did. And so it's, it just saves me a lot of time to just do it when I know I'm going to do a job that I like. That that is an interesting point because sometimes people say, and I've I've used this advice myself, is sometimes uh, you just muscle through it. But you're talking about actually getting away from it uh, because you know you're going to have to redo it anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and and when you're at the park, I mean, are you still drawing there, or are you just like sort of like letting everything drop off you, or trying to? No, I, yeah, I just if I'm totally not in the mood, I'll just do something else, you know, because. You don't want to sit and do nothing but draw comics anyway, or you're going to have boring comics because you have nothing to talk about. Yeah. Um, but then also, 
I have been a lot lately uh, when I was working on The Kind, and it was the same time I was doing the play. I was doing some Shakespeare in the Park, and I had a very small role, so I was on stage like twice during the whole performance. And as soon as I was off stage, I would take off my costume and start inking until my, my scene came again. And it was nice to get away from the desk. Like it, That's not something I could do like during the writing process or the drawing process, but like something like inking where it's already down in pencil and all I'm doing is uh, you know, going over the lines. It's not really creative work. It's just kind of grunt work at that point. Um, it's, it's, I find it much more helpful to get away from the desk and just you know, distractions are okay. I got people talking to me. I got, uh, I can listen to the play, got nice sunshine. So that, that actually, I got a lot more work done when I was running back and forth in between scenes than I do most days at my desk. Mm. So change of venue, right? Mm. It's still not showing up on the screen and I don't know why that is. I don't know what the, uh, where the hiccup is on, uh, is this something where maybe you need to close Photoshop and open it up after you've done screen sharing? Is it something where your system resources are going on? I don't know. Or if it's something on our end, or if it's something on Skype with even like the connection with me talking to you. Um, I, just, I had just done the screen sharing when we were talking before we went live. I know. It worked just fine. <laughs> the moment we hit the record button is when it, it, it fails on us, right? We'll, we'll try to be quiet for a second and cross our fingers while this thing does its thing. Everybody in the chat, clap if you believe in fairies. If it worst comes to worst, I could always just call on the iPad and point it at the screen. Yeah, yeah, I suppose we could do that. It's not going to look very good, but but it, everybody in the chat is clapping. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Let's see if it works. If it, if the, if the Skype fairies will actually help us out with this. What's that? What's that, Matt? You want? Okay, I'm gonna I'm, uh, tell you what, Ryan. I'm gonna call you back real quick. We're gonna start with a whole new fresh call and see if we if this if that helps. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hang up on Ryan, not to be rude, and then I'm gonna call him back. And there he is. Hey, Ryan. All right, you see me. That's I see good. you. Now let's share screen and see what happens there. <laughs> People in the chat are saying, I, I don't believe in fairies, but I do believe in you. Oh, do we have, everybody's clapping. And we've got screen sharing. All, All right. right. Oh, Matt, you want right. to wanna center the, the window? You can do that. Okay, I'll do it. So there we go. We're in business oh. now, Ryan. So now. Open up the chest of secrets. Let's find out. All right. Well, this is the book that I'm talking about. This is called The Kind. And uh, I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, just skim through some of the pages here. And as I was saying, the, the first things I start off with before I even start working on a project, the things that I keep in mind are never work a page at a time, never force myself to work when I'm not into it. And the biggest rule is automate, which is what I'm going to do a lot of talking about uh, today and um, the the next step when I get into pre-production I'm gonna open up Photoshop now when I get into pre-production the thing that has been helping me oops spoilers <laughs> the, uh, the thing that's been helping me a lot for this project is um, planning in advance. There's something I learned uh, from a workshop at AADL, actually, from David Peterson. Uh, he talked about when he works on Mouse Guard, um, he has a, he, his pages are all square and he has a grid. And every single page that he does is just based on that grid. Um, whether, you know, like if he needs two panels, he has different versions of it. And that's what I've done. I made a, a document of my page size. And if I, if I need two panels, I can either do two long panels two tall panels, um, one big, one skinny, switch that around, same thing with three panels, I have all my options set up, and for every page I just grab one of these and it keeps everything uh, everything looking the same and it's, it's a lot, instead of having to sit there with a ruler and measure out what size I need, it's all ready and I have hundreds of options here. Of any, and it goes all the way up to six panels, six small ones. 
uh, what I went and did then is I went for my whole book and I took one of those panels and before I drew a single character I put in the background and the word balloons for each one and uh, so what I did with this book you'll see with the backgrounds uh, the, I did live action backgrounds and I actually a lot of times when comics do live action backgrounds they'll just like look at stuff on Flickr or find pictures online I actually uh, had had done pre-production on this film before as a movie that didn't end up happening. Um, it was a comic first, and then I was going to make it into a movie, but it didn't happen. So I had already planned all the sets, and I hired a cinematographer, and we went out and actually shot the entire book as though we were filming, filming a movie with no actors in it um, in all the locations where the movie takes place. And so I, I prepped the entire book just like this, and uh, the other thing that has been helping me lately is the uh, multi-page Photoshop files. Instead of having a different Photoshop file for every uh, page that I work on, um, if you can see in my layers window here, I have folders. This is page 130. This is page 131. And if I open any of these, you oh, have the text. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, so you're uh, using the group folders as page yeah. files. Yeah. And then, I, you know, then... I can work on a bunch of pages at once without having to, you know, figure out, oh, where is this window? They're all in order. I just click to the next one, and it's everything's hidden out of view unless I open it up. Um, there is one thing to think about this. You, you don't want to put too many pages in one folder if you're working at high res because it can start to really slow down your machine. I was going to ask, like, what resolution are you working here? It's not like 600 DPI, yeah. is it? Well, this one is, uh, I think each page is like 4,000 uh, pixels across. Okay. Um, but uh, I'll typically, typically I was doing like 12 to 24 pages in a uh, in one of these folders. And toward the end, it starts to slow down, but you just, um, I just kind of, once I know I'm getting toward the end, I just kind of um, pray that things don't crash because <laughs> like when i when, it, when i get toward the end of one of these files like every time i save it takes like um like five ten minutes to save the file but i've saved so much time um in doing it this way that that five ten minutes still does you know i still saved a lot of time mm -hmm. um so yeah before i ever drew a single page i had the entire graphic novel finished just like this with the backgrounds, the borders, and the, the text. Um, so then what I did is I, I went to the drawing stage. Um, I'm going to switch back to my cam here. Okay. You can see me, right? Yeah, there you are. All right, move the cap up here. And what I did then is I would look at the the Photoshop page of what my comic's going to look like, and then I have to draw the characters. And I always draw my, um, you know, this one obviously I'm drawing the characters separately from the background because the background's live action, but I always do that anyway. Mm -hmm. um, instead of drawing the characters into the page, I find it, it just, it's nice, it, it's more easy to be loose um, and redraw things when I don't like them if I just draw them separately on a page. And then even later, if I decide I don't like this drawing of the character, I don't have to go and redraw the page or white out and mess something up. I can just, I don't like this page, throw it away, draw another one. Right. Um, and so I go through the entire chapter uh, page by page like that. Um, and uh, I always draw the... When, when I do draw backgrounds, I typically do that last because once I, I can resize the characters inside the, the panel the way I want them and the bubbles the way I want them, then I can see what I, exactly what um, is there for the, to make the layout look good, um, what part of the background I need, and I can just do that digitally. Um, so you're just drawing these characters on just like loose scrap paper, like like or like a typing paper, right? This isn't fancy, you know, 500 series Bristol or anything like that. Yeah, like I when I first started making comics, I was like, I was like import like I moved to Korea and I was like importing really fancy paper because I couldn't find the paper I'd used before I 
before I left and I, I wanted to make sure I used the same paper because it was the highest quality and I was paying like 50 bucks to have it mailed. And then eventually I started realizing it doesn't really matter because I'm scanning it and like knocking out the every color but the blacks. Mm-hmm. So then I started drawing my comics like I was teaching at the time and I started just like doodling comics on the backs of my students' homework as they're as I'm teaching. And then I'd be like, oh, wow, that panel actually looks pretty good. I'm actually going to put that in the comic. So I'd, teacher, can I have my homework back? I'm like, no, you can't. I'll give it to you tomorrow. <laughs> Scan it and then pop that right into the comic. Oh, funny. All my comics that way. Um, and then another thing, uh, at the drawing stage, another important thing to uh, speed things up is to find the right drawing tools. Um, and don't don't be afraid to try new things. And then once you find something that works, don't be afraid to stick with it for a while because I was, um, stubbornly using, uh, uniballs for a long time. And then I, I ran out and I went to get a new pen and it was so much faster that I just can't even believe that I ever used these for so long. Um, what are you using now? Uh, it's called, I don't even know what the actual pen is called because I only use the refill. <laughs> so I, I found that this pen that looked really cool, but it was like $12 per pen. And um, I'm like, I, I go through too many pens. I can't afford that. And I asked how I asked if they sold refills and how much those were. And she's like pointed at, at this next to it and is like, that's the refill. And I'm like, but that, that looks like a pen. And she's like, yeah, you just screw it inside the other pen. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to buy the refills because they're too <laughs> So it was literally $10 for a larger piece of plastic that went on the outside of it. Oh, my gosh. It's called a Stylo Refill MLJ20. And it just has this nice little chiseled tip. And um, and you can just draw really fast and get different line widths. And it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't like, break down and fray and mess up the line and stuff. That's been, that's been working well for me. But tools are different for everybody. So just experiment and find something that that works um so you're gonna say something oh i well i was i was thinking that this might be a good opportunity uh to before we shift into actual the actions that you do you know your action palette tricks uh to talk about the whole story and the the giveaway that we're doing today because you generously offered to do some giveaways for uh this edition of comics are great and uh, we're gonna do it just like we did before for those who are familiar with the show uh for the next half hour we're gonna do we're going to do a twitter hashtag uh, contest to get well. What, what can people get? What's what's the giveaway this time, Ryan? Did you want to drop it? Yeah, sure. Well, um, first of all, for every single person who enters, I'm going to give them a copy of the kind. Oh, awesome! And uh, I'll choose one to get our complete uh, fifty dollar collection of comics from the dash whole dash story dot com. Uh, you can also find uh, links to this on Ryan Estrada's Google Plus page and his Twitter uh, Twitter feed. But uh, if you go to the, the the whole story, it's the whole story with dashes in between the words dot com. Uh, it's until let's see, what's the the end date on this? Until July twenty third, you're offering how many comics are in this collection? Uh, it's it's a cl- collection of e comics, uh, and it's pay what you want for it so you can pay as little as a dollar for and, and I, I'm sorry you blipped out there how much how many books are in this collection uh, there's seven total with different reward tiers uh, and, and who's involved I mean there's there's like some uh, you know real stars of, of web comics are part of this Casey Green mm-hmm. Audra yeah, Fur- we- Ferici uh, who else um, we got Ryan North Meredith Grand we got um, uh, Oscar nominee Don Hertzfeld we got Doug Tenaple. He's the guy that created Earthworm Jim. Um, basically, just every I, I just got like all the hugest people in indie comics and web comics. Um, but what basically what the whole story is is um, I wanted to make a new way to buy digital comics because I've been trying to buy them a lot and it's it's kind of a pain in the butt because like a lot of them you have to you have to like download an app and you can only read them through the app and you can't like if, if that app doesn't open, you can't read the comic and, um, or like they charge more for, a uh, for the ebook than they do the, the print comic. Um, uh, yeah. like I was going to read bone as an e- ebook and it ended up like 10 times the price of just 
buying the complete collection and having it shipped to South Korea. Wow. And, and like so some of them, just the resolution was so terrible I couldn't read it. So anyway, I just wanted to make it as simple as possible. So I I put together a bunch of eBooks, and I didn't want to just I really wanted to give it a go and make sure it could work. So rather than just release my old stuff, I spent like the last eight months hiring a bunch of artists and putting together seven brand new graphic novels um, that I I really think turned out nice and were putting them up as like retina resolution, super high res, download them, keep them forever, uh, eBooks. And uh, it's pay what you want. So you can pay a dollar, you can pay a thousand dollars. So, I mean, people are already making this connection. It's like the humble indie bundle, but for comics. There's like the, the short answer to, to what it is. So, okay, so here's how you can enter to get the $50 collection of these ebooks is if you go to Twitter right now for the next half hour and use, uh, create a post with the hashtag whole story CAG. And, you know, you really should point at the-whole-story.com as well. Say, boy, I'm really excited about this collection. Uh, or, or you could point at comicsgreat.tv and say, hey, they're talking about the whole story right now. And then include the hashtag whole story CAG. And then we're going to randomly select one of the people who use that hashtag to get the $50 collection. But as Ryan said, everybody who enters is going to get uh, an e uh, book version of the kind which I've read it's a fantastic graphic novel you won't be sorry for entering so uh, I've got the Twitter search open now as does Eric Kloster in the chat client so uh, everybody go now we will in 30 minutes we'll announce the winner so okay Ryan time for some time for some uh, Photoshop wizardry where you show us how you did these 158 pages in 30 minutes I gotta see this all right so um, we've gone through pre-production drawing and that's where the magic happens. That's where Photoshop begins. So let me just... Uh, um, so basically then, like I said, I'm working uh, on my whole chapter at once. Then I scan the whole chapter at once. And, uh, just, and then I open up in Photoshop. And let me share the screen and hope that this works. We'll give it another try. In the worst case scenario, I just have to call you back again real quick. And people are already starting to uh, post on Twitter the hashtag. Jonathan Rector said, doing the right thing. Uh, whole story. Yeah, it's still, I think it's, I think it's choking up on uh, the bandwidth on our end again, Ryan. I'm going to call you back real quick. So, Tom, if I could take the, the mouse away from you just for a second. Um We'll go ahead and hang up, and I'm going to recall. Video call, Ryan. And we'll see if we've got some fresh bandwidth now. All right, do we want to try to do that screen sharing thing again, Ryan? Yep. So it's thinking. We're looking at the card. Yeah, there we go. We've got All Photoshop. Right. Awesome. And people are clapping in the production room. I'm going to take the mouse again to center the screen grab window. All right. Let's see what you got, Ryan. All right. So um, basically, once I scan it, I'll have a whole bunch. You know, Normally, I'll have like 150 of these open at a time. But like I said, I don't want to crash in the middle of the show. So I've just got a handful that I opened here. Um, and I basically get a bunch of scans like this. Now, when you when you first get a scan, um, you know there's a lot of tweaking you got to do to it before you can color it. Um, you got to make sure that it's uh, RGB. You got to get your la layers right. But that's where your handy actions palette comes in. Um, I've already got all these done. Uh, but say for example, I'm, I'm doing this to the beginning. I'm just going to click a new action and call this ready for color. And it's gonna, I'm gonna hit record. Now everything I do from now, it's gonna remember that. So I'm gonna say um, switch it from bitmap to RGB color. Um, then the next thing I typically do is I will copy a new version of my background. I'm gonna set the new layer to multiply so that you get just the black lines and everything else will is see-through so the color will go back and then I'm going to click back on the background so that uh, I can color on that layer 
and then I hit stop. Now, if I go to um, the next layer, and that thing I just made ready for color, if I hit play, it does the exact same thing to that. And um, you can either do the, it that way, or the other secret that Photoshop has, you go to automate, and then click batch, tell it do ready for color to all the opened files. You can also tell it to do it to, to a certain folder. And then you click OK, and it'll do that to every file you have open immediately. So you're just you're just opening up all of your scanned files and then assigning an action to all open files, what you just did. Now you don't have yeah. to redo that with each scan. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it, I, you know, I, I didn't do it just now because I have other files open. Sure. But um, if I had just done that, it would have just gone to every file I have open and done all that. So everything's taken care of. That whole process is done in three seconds. Okay. Um, let me just do these manually so that I don't have to mess up the other files. See, so even if you're not doing batch, it's this fast that I'm doing it. It's just changing the layers the way I told it to. You want to know what's funny? This is this is how myopic I get about making my comics. Is that uh, I have a similar action script set up. Uh, to a function key and I'm, I'm just hitting that function key. I'm opening the file function key, opening file function key. It never even occurred to me to do a batch action on that to like, you know, convert my RGB images to grayscale, uh, adjust the threshold to such and such percent. And then I'll then knock out the whites, uh, you know, by switching it to multiply or whatever. Um, so I never, never even occurred to me to do a batch action on that. That's actually pretty clever. So, okay. What's next? Yeah. And, um, like I said, that, that's just the way I typically do it. Like any any way that you make comics, if if the, you know you can just when you hit record, it'll save it. Like sometimes I do colored lines, and that's a different action. But basically, whatever you're going to do to one file, just do it once and do that. So anyway, then we move on to coloring, and like I said, it's already on the background layer. Now there's a problem that a lot of people have. Let me get the right color here. Here's a find an already colored picture of the werewolf. Um. I guess I've officially spoiled the, the ending of the book, um, even though it was, you know, anyway. Yes, there's a werewolf in it. Um, <laughs> I'm coloring it, everybody's going to know. Uh, yeah. So there's, okay, I have the gray color. Now there's a problem in Photoshop. When you use the paint bucket tool, a lot of times um, you're going to get a lot of artifacts here. Um, it's not bad in this file because I scanned it to make sure that it, uh, this is solid black. But a lot of times you'll get like a, let me try that with a, it, you'll get like a jagged line. And when you zoom out, it looks really bad. And I've seen so many tutorials of artists um, that have all these really complicated techniques for, for getting around that. There's like plugins that'll make every uh, area a different color and um, yeah, you're talking, you're talking about like the, the B pulp plugin, which I've talked about before on the show. Yeah. Um, but what I did is I made a new action. Well, well first I'm going to make a selection. Um, okay, I'm going to select all the areas that are supposed to be this color gray. Now, new action. Fill her up. Record. Now I'm going to... Uh, Modify my selection. I'm going to expand it by, let's say, three pixels. Now, so, if you look, it's expanded, so it goes over the line. Right. So just to describe this in the audio, what you did is you took your magic wand tool, tapped inside of the areas that you want to fill in gray, and that selects all the white pixels up to the black line, and then when you expand the selection, it overlaps the black line by three pixels. So it's, it, you won't have any of that weird white outline uh, around your fills that sometimes you see on DeviantArt when people just fill their stuff with a paint bucket, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I'm going to tell it to fill with the foreground color, and then I'm going to tell it to deselect. And now you see there's no... And then I'm going to hit stop on the action. Okay. And uh, now... Every time I click that action, 
I just make my selection. I hit the action and it did the same thing. Um, something's wrong. So you're just on the next file, you're making the selection, then hitting the play button on the action palette. Yep. And then you hit play and then boom. Right. Okay. Now, the, when I figured uh, this out and made all, all of these, that like cut my work time in like more than half. But then later I figured out that, like you said, you can take your action and set it to a function key. Mm -hmm. And then I figured on my tablet, you can take the buttons on the side of your tablet and set those to a function key. Right. So you can have the buttons. So now I can have the, I have a button on my tablet that if I click that, it fills it in that way with the color that I want. And I should say also, just to, for uh, also for people listening in uh, after the fact, that you're filling on another layer. You're not filling on top of your line art layer. This is happening below the line art layer. So as yeah. to, so when it fills, so when you expand over the black lines, it's not actually covering the black lines, right? Yeah, that's the reason that I told it. I made the action that makes an extra copy of the layer and then sets that layer to um, to multiply. Because then that layer is always on top and it always keeps your black lines there. Okay. Um, and then the other thing I figured out how to do on my uh, um, tablet is that, um, you know, when you're switching uh, layers, you have to go up and find it. And sometimes you need to click on the little thing and do this. I set two buttons on my um, tablet to do back and next so I can fly through all my files like this. So when I, I don't want to switch back to a uh, video to show you because I don't want to die again. <laughs> I'm yeah. doing this with, I have my left hand on the two buttons and my right hand on the pen. And I can just uh, fly through every file, click, 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 click with the, that, click, click with the thumb, and then just fly through them all with just those two fingers. Okay. Okay. So wait a minute. So when you say back and next buttons, are you like talking about like the, the, the essentially the arrow keys? Is that is that what you're assigning them to? Um, it's um, I forget what the key command is because I don't use it anymore. But uh, next, I think it's somewhere in the options um, to do the next file. Okay. Um, I don't know. There's a there's a key command for that to go to the next file in the previous file. I wonder if it's in the Windows palette. I'll look it up when I get home. Uh, but yeah, like, so someplace in there where you can actually uh, toggle between all the different open documents. Okay, and so you just assign that to another, again, like a, one of the keys on your tablet. So now you can just rattle through really quick, do your selections, run that action, and boom, now suddenly you, you filled it in with your base colors. Now, see, now somebody's going to say, well, the B-Pelt plugins do that. But yeah, well, there's a second step when you use the B-Pelt plugins because it fills it in with random colors that you have to go back and select again and fill with the proper base colors for your flats, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're noticing what, I, what I'm doing here is I'm actually, I'm not coloring one panel at a time. I'm doing one color at a time. So I go through the whole 120 files or whatever, and I just uh, do just this gray. Mm -hmm. I don't have to change any anything. I can just use my, these two fingers. That's a great panel, by the way. <laughs> and do that one color, which I'm coloring sloppily because I'm I'm just these are files that were already colored months ago. So anyway, I'm going to get the next color, which is the 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 muzzle and the the chest and I'm just gonna go through and do the same thing with that okay. and uh, yeah this is this is what I was doing when I said that I did a hundred and however many pages in 30 minutes now it helps too that you know when using the selection tool you've got closed shapes here this might be a whole different predicament if you had a lot of like open sh uh, open lines open shapes in your in your art style right yeah that's something i learned uh quickly is to make sure that i always check and use thick bold lines that fill in the shapes because every once in a while you know I'll, I'll still find shapes like that but then i just need 
like here, you'll notice there's a, a thing missing. So all I got to do is switch back to black and then just fill in a little, little, the little Close gap. Close the gap, yep. And even if you want to leave it open on your layer that you're doing the fills in, you can just connect that line just on that layer. And then when you finish all of your fills, uh, you know, your your line art layer can have the open lines. I mean, that's something I do when I use the Beat Pelt plugins is that I'll have my flats layer with the line art. I'll close all the shapes, leave the original line art layer with the open shapes, and then run the Beat Pelt plugin. Which is... It's it's, with the color you're going to... Yep. You're there. And then if I fill in with the red, you can still have that gap. Yep. That works. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's that's what I do um, throughout that whole thing. And then once I, I do, how many colors are in this? One, two, uh, three, four, five, six. So I do that six times, and I have those colors, and then this is the flat color for the character. Mm-hmm. Um, and that you know that occasionally there's other. This is me being eaten by a werewolf. <laughs> so, I, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Oh, so so I mean, this this is uh, essentially flatting. Uh, 101, a uh, really fast flatting process, and then you would go in and then do like a, a secondary tone on all of these when you go to final, right? Yeah, well, um, what I do, sometimes I do it here in the window. Sometimes for like this chapter, I was doing it in the, the final file so I could match the backgrounds. But basically, all you have to do if I want to add like a, um, like I'll select outside of the characters inverse. And I'll, I'll, what I'll actually do is I'll, um, actually, I'll, I'll make an action right now. Um, I'm going to make an action called uh, Shadow Layer. Um, I'm going to tell it to, now it's recording, I'm going to tell it to uh, inverse the selection. Then I'm going to tell it, well, actually, I'm going to start from scratch because I accidentally put something. Yeah, and then you can always edit your your action recording, or just delete it from altogether and start over again. Okay, record. Select inverse. Um, let's make another layer. We're gonna drop this layer down to say thirty percent, and you know, depending on what's going on in the scene, um, you can make a new action. You know, if it's if it's really dark and mysterious, just make it um, uh, the opacity higher. So right. So you, you're setting the layers opacity to thirty percent, but yeah, for different scenes, you could choose different opacities, like a darker opacity or, or more opaque, or even probably. I, I'm guessing you're going to fill this with the color now, right? Um, well, I can either there's and now that I have this here, there's lots of things that I can do. Um, like if I want to just add shadows, I can just, now that that's selected, I can get uh, a nice brush tool with black and just kind of scribble in where I want the, the shadows to be. Oh. Look at that, just like with, like with the paintbrush tool. Because yeah. since, I'm, since I'm coloring with a transparent black, it's affecting all of the colors. Instead, of, you know, and and I, I don't always do that. So a lot of times, I will go in and choose colors and highlight colors and and all that. But um, like on scene, I'll, I'll save that for like a dramatic scene where I really want to show something. Um, but like if, if it's just to add depth and add a little bit of shadow, I'll just do something like this. Or. Uh, Instead of doing shadows with the same layer, I sometimes just do highlights instead. And I'll grab like a kind of a yellowish white and then kind of do this 
And because you are uh, working within a selection, you don't have to worry about so much about staying within the lines on the outer contours of the characters because you can't paint outside of them right now because of the selection that's been made. This is similar to something Audra Ferrici demoed at the Ann Arbor District Library a few months back at the, at the Comics Artist Forum, was that she just uses a layer with a color and changes either the opacity or the, um, the, the layer mode in order to have the colors that she throws in that layer interact with what's below it. I know other people do this as well well um so oh, <laughs> and, and, I, and I, I see that uh we're coming up on the book recommendation segment in a moment matt matt, matt dubay in the control room is, is is waving frantically at me and, and i'm breaking the fourth wall by even mentioning it but you know what that's the fun of doing a podcast is that we don't have to worry so much about that kind of thing anyway but so okay cool um is there any other tips that you want to throw out on this ryan before we kick over to book recommendations yeah well I'll talk about let me just quickly jump over to the – nope, that's – do I have like two more minutes? Sure, sure. You got – yeah. Right. Take, if I can find the right file, I don't know where I put it. There we go. Um, so as I said, I had the whole book thing done like this. And then basically uh, I just start popping in these characters – into this setting. Uh, why is it not changing? Anyway, um, and then another another thing that I do is I have an action called uh, word bubble layer, which I already have the word bubbles here. Okay, Let's people see. were asking about this, how you do your your word balloons. So let, yeah, let's see this. Um. Okay, let me turn off the word balloons that I have. I can't find where they are. Okay, I have an action called Word Bubble Layer, which what it does is it makes a new layer, and it sets that layer style to have a stroke. Um, basically, I would just go to Layer, uh, Layer Style, and then Stroke. I said it's like a, a 5 or 10 pixel black stroke, depending on... So basically, if I, if I play this action it's gonna make me this layer and then whatever shape I draw in this layer immediately becomes a word balloon so you're just using the lasso tool or the shape tool or okay and it's automatically assigning a stroke to it yeah, it's a huge stroke because I shrunk down this file to well and that actually works out great for the video I mean it's, it gives us a nice quick uh, demo but so anything you paint on that layer will be automatically given a stroke because it put uh, the, what is that called? A uh, layer effect, a stroke yeah. layer effect on it. Yeah, and then I can make the, the tails just with a selection tool, edit fill. Which you can also assign to a function key with the action palette. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, well, and then just to go super quickly, uh, what I was talking about, the way that, um, to ex then to export it, I can also set an action to take each one of those files and make it a certain size. And then it, um, the other tool that I use a lot is called Automator, which is, in, I don't know what the equivalent is on a PC, but in Mac you have Automator, um, which is just like Photoshop Actions, but for uh, your whole computer. And there's an there's one called new PDF from images. So if I take all of these images that I just exported and drag them in here, tell it take all of these files, new PDF from images, and then click run, it's going to immediately turn that into an ebook. Oh my God. <laughs> I was using InDesign. I was using InDesign and then creating a template and then dropping all the JPEGs in one at a time and then exporting it uh, as a PDF. Okay, now I'm gonna now I'm gonna really blow your mind. <laughs> this action that I just made, I can save it as a droplet, and I have this uh, droplet right here called Make a PDF. And now I don't ever need to even open that program again. If I have any any number of JPEGs, I just drop drag them to this, wait five seconds, 
and I have an ebook. Wait a minute. So you, oh, I see. So it, it creates an automator uh, sort of alias on your desktop called Make a PDF. Uh, it's just a little droplet that yeah. um, does whatever I just told it to do. Oh my gosh! And it just it just opened it. It just opened all those files, made a PDF just while we were talking, and put it on my desktop. And now I click it open, and it's a you got an ebook. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. So, yeah, you know, okay, so uh, Brandon Dayton's in the chat, and he's talking about uh, instead of throwing out, it, it, instead of using selections, possibly using um, layer masks uh, as, as a way to do this as well. And I want to point people, if you're enjoying this conversation, you should check out Comics Are Great episode 41, where Brandon Dayton did a demo of digital painting. That's at comicsagreat.com slash CAG401. I would consider that one like a very similar in content to this discussion, uh, but with a whole different approach to uh, painting and, and, and illustrating in Photoshop. Um, but, you know, Ryan, I'm thinking we need to do this as a full on class, uh, like where you could actually have like two hours to really demo this stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, twist your arm into doing this for Lean Into Art later on. But, uh, okay, so we got to kick into uh, our recommendations segment because uh, our AEDL staff member is here, Aaron Helmrich. And, Ryan, I'm going to let you cogitate for a minute, and if you have any book recommendations you want to throw out, uh, whether it's a digital book, a webcomic, or a uh, physical comic that you want to talk about uh, in a few minutes here, uh, I know Aaron's got some of her own. Oh, is your microphone getting all floppy? Here comes Matt Duvet to fix it for us. But, uh, but we're going to do book recommendations, and then we're going to close with a few final thoughts from Ryan and then also announce the winner of the uh, contest where you can get a copy of the $50 bundle from The Whole Story, The Dash Whole Dash Story. So uh, I don't think, I, you know, I'm going to have a lot of book recommendations in the weeks to come after Kids Read Comics. And that's the, and I want to say, too, that Aaron Helmrich, welcome to the show, first time here. Uh, is your mic on? Hey, can can we can we pot Aaron up as they say in the industry? Uh, <laughs> Are we good to go? Yeah, yeah there's okay. Aaron Helmrich of ADL dot org, uh, and uh, I you know I want to say that you and Matt and Sharon Iverson and Eli Nyberger and all the folks who did an amazing thing this past weekend. It was an awesome weekend. We had yeah. we had a blast. It's the first time here. Hopefully, not the last. No, not and, if I have anything um, to say about it. Was, it was it was one of the highlights for all of us. We were joking on Monday about how good we are at throwing a party and then cleaning up because you would never have known that this place was teeming with people all weekend uh, All long. weekend long for Kids Read Comics, yeah. Ryan, I'm so sorry that you couldn't have been here for that. Uh, it, it was it was a lot of fun this past weekend. Let me get, take the mouse and get Ryan centered in the shot. I had a good time when I was there. I wish I could have been there. Maybe next year. Maybe next year we can fly you out or somehow we'll raise funds somehow to get you out here uh, just for the weekend because, yeah, it was, it was a, this place got overrun. It was awesome. I mean, between... Your hardcore followers and the folks that have already, you know, are part of that community, and then the fact that we've got this online part of our game for summer. Yeah. Um, the kids were just insane, and all <laughs> the badges that all of the artists created are so cool for our game. All those images. Yeah. Um, and in, and I know people are coveting them, even though they couldn't get them when they were here this week, or they couldn't make it this weekend. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, it tied in the Kids Read Comics event into the AADL Summer Game. Yeah. So actually attending events, unlocked secret badges, yeah. and gamified the whole weekend yeah. it was a super fun but anyway it was a lot of work and we were all i mean it was 107 degrees still and recovering Ar i'm sure but yeah. oh yeah <laughs> yeah i'm sure we all are yeah, yeah. for sure but but it, it was worth it it was it was a lot of fun so anyway i want to take this uh, opportunity to publicly thank you for all you did i mean because oh my gosh there was so yeah. much spreadsheet and going on in, in aaron's land <laughs> uh anyway okay well, with that in mind i did actually grab a few books that we purchased from the people that were here this weekend so those of you that couldn't make it to Kids Read Comics, can at least look forward to some of the books that are coming yeah. through. Um, and if you know about these Jersey more than I do, you know, feel free to jump in. This first one I've got is My Sister the Freak, which looks kind of like it might be Buffy for younger kids, two sisters that are living in a pretty crazy world with zombies and all kinds of stuff going on are you familiar with this oh yeah my sister the freak yeah yeah it's uh it's it's monsters and magic and young girls getting tossed into that yeah. world and trying to make the uh figure it out as best they can right uh danny jones i mean uh, well well respected acclaimed children's book illustrator and uh what's it at my sister the freak.com I, I gotta find out while you talk about the art yeah. i mean you had to talk to her a little bit at the show didn't you 
I did briefly, and like I mean, I was wondering inside too. There's the illustrations are awesome and the action. It's just nice to be able to add. I'm I'm the one who buys all the comics and graphic novels for the library, and it's hard sometimes to get your hands on really good quality, which is why this weekend was so great, and why it's nice that we can add a lot of these books to the collection for folks who couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. um, next one I had was this Power Lunch. Which, mm. like, I think every boy in America or girl <laughs> would enjoy the fact that if you eat something in particular, it gives you superpowers so that you can go after the bullies that are coming after you. The Popeye in the syndrome. Lunchroom. Yeah. So the main character can only eat white food. And if he doesn't eat white food, then he's able to have amazing superpowers. Oh, weird. Um, yeah. So, like, right out of the gate, he is able to save. He's the new kid in school, and he's able to save the other new kid by eating some trail mix. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and it gives him amazing powers. It doesn't give the other kid quite those powers. but It's got um, a super clean art style, and I like how yeah. the backgrounds are all rendered in just color. There's no yeah. actual lines around the background, so it has like a kind of an animated look to it, as does Danny's. Uh, Danny, yeah. in Danny jo DannyDraws.com is where you can find My Sister the Freak. And then this is by Jay Torres and yeah. Dean Trippy. So, yeah, of course it's good, right? Uh, and, our, and our collections fly off the shelf, so the kids are going to totally devour these. We got enough copies for several locations, so that'll be awesome. And then the last one I brought from this weekend was um, Intrepid Girlbot, which is, you know, really unusual in the sense that wordless books are, you know, this one's signed, too. So mm -hmm. um, wordless is really hard to pull off, so it's, it's always impressive when you can tell a whole story um, with some sound effects. This and this is by dialogue. this is by Diana Nock and uh, the website is intrepidgirlbot.com. Now Diana Nock is an ex exceedingly talented cartoonist. Um, she worked with C. Spike Trotman on the Porecraft book, which people were, were talking about. Ryan, have you seen the Porecraft book? I'm I'm sure you have. I have seen it. Uh, oh. I, oh, I have secrets. I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping hints about the future of. No, about Porecraft. Okay. It's just Okay. <laughs> well, I, I, I believe that isn't Spike involved in the whole story in some way or another? She wrote one of the, the stories. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, but, but, yeah. So, yeah. Diana Nock, awesome cartoonist, great storyteller. Uh, I mean, if, if you... I would, I would classify Diana Nock as one of those storytellers who's like the storyteller storyteller in the sense that it, it, it's something you can get lost in. It's something that's just fun for a, an enjoyable read, but also it's great for picking apart as a cartoonist. I mean, there's a lot, it's like Watterson stuff. It's, there's a lot going on on the page when Diana's working that makes it just fun to get lost in on multiple levels. So yeah, if you have not visited intrepidgirlbot.com, uh, what's wrong with you? Go there. Uh, and right I have after to the say show. wordless is so much harder to do in any yeah. format, let alone comics, but um, it, they're more of a challenge to read in a way because mm -hmm. people don't necessarily know what to do with themselves without that text. So to be able to carry it and have the reader, um, or in this case, the, the looker, I guess, they're not <laughs> reading words. Um, yeah, they're reading, they're reading in. images, right? Yeah, so I'm always impressed by wordless. Um, yeah. And then for the teens, not necessarily related to Kids Read Comics this week, um, but I know you were out in ALA with Faith Aaron Hicks. Oh, So we've got the new yes. um, Friends with Boys. Super cool. Ready to go out onto the shelf quite soon, still being processed. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How, what? Yeah, I think it's a slightly upside down cover. Okay, that's the way it goes. <laughs> yeah. That's the way the book goes. Yeah. So Faith Aaron Hicks of, uh, I think it's Tales of High School Angst and, uh, and Being Friends with Boys. <laughs> And, and this is a nice first, second publication. They always do such a good job. Friendswithboys.com is the website. And, uh, yeah, it's got Faith's, like, you know, just graceful line work, super clean designs, uh, really good black values, uh, black and white values. And uh, she's also a, a pretty awesome storyteller to boot. And, yeah. I mean... At first second, even though you put first second behind anything, uh, you know, and you know that that's that's really good quality yeah. control there. So it's one of the greatest things when I know that I'm buying things from them because <laughs> I always know it's going to be a good product. And then lastly, um, a lot of people have been oh really into Twin Speaker, and this is actually the final volume. <gasps> um, pretty, volume twelve, pretty thick there. So that's um, exciting for some. I was showing them upstairs that are 
chomping at the bit. So we've got 10, 11, and 12 now, finally, and the coming to the shelves. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Now, now it, it, people have heard me talk about this before. I'm going to quote Casey Van Heis of wintersandlavelle.com. If you don't cry when you read this book, you are an inhuman monster. <laughs> it, it is so heartbreaking. It's so touching. And it's the story about a little girl in the near future who wants to go to astronaut school. And there is this tragedy that happened years ago that has affected all the lives of the people who are going to astronaut school. And there is this imaginary friend, or is he, named Mr. Lion, who is assists her in her training to become an astronaut and and through this girl just being this being basically a Ryan Estrada being like a good hearted cheerful person winds up fixing all the lives of these people who have some kind of deep deep sadness and pain in their lives it's oh my gosh it's just a heartbreaking series but you just can't stop reading it well and I think everyone's going to be crying a lot and sad when it's over I'm just impressed by the thickness of it yeah um, which tells you there's a lot to be a told lot, there a lot to wrap up I can't believe it's finally ending all right so th- wow a lot of recommendations and see. then just real oh, quick, cool. I grabbed some of the bigger kind of cool looking stuff that's coming in for adults. This is just a nice um, collection of Buffy the Vampire Slayer season mm. eight. And it's got a couple of one offs that haven't been in the previous. And it's a lovely. Wow. Awesome. Look at that. Book with lots of. Great that's sort of like those absolute editions that exactly. DC does. Yeah. Yeah. But this is put out by Dark Horse. Yeah. Big fancy coffee table version of the of the book. So it's just nice that we can offer. Um, our patrons at the library, a yep. chance to get their hands on some of these nicer, bigger books. And then lastly, I just grabbed this one because it looked pretty cool, a new Romeo and Juliet volume that came out, Stan Lee, Terry, Terry Douglas. Yeah. I don't, and, I've not heard of this. Yeah, very sort of cinematic, kind of reminded me of 300 a little bit, just in the way that the format yeah, is laid it's out. Yeah, it's more of a wide format mm-hmm. than a tall format, right? Which probably looks like it would work better on a screen, yeah, too, exactly. than, than in, yeah. So then, who knows? Maybe it's being turned into a movie as we speak, since they've already got the... Uh, Romeo and Juliet, The War. Oh, yeah. interesting. All right, I'll yeah. have to look at this, too. So this so, is in the library's collection now? Yeah, just about. They're um, waiting to go out onto the shelves. Okay, cool. So the more reasons to visit comics.aadl.org or come down to the downtown branch uh, or just do it online. You can put it on hold and Absolutely. have it delivered to your door. If you are a card-holding right. <laughs> member of the library, right. sorry, folks that live outside of Ann Arbor, yeah. but that's why you should move here yeah. uh, after all. So, okay, well, thank you, Aaron. Right. R- Ryan, did you have anything that you wanted to recommend for our, our closing segment? Yeah, well, first of all, I mean, you mentioned Poor Craft, which is one of my favorite books of all time. There's actually a quote from me on the back cover um, saying basically like it, if anyone needs a graduation gift for someone or like a for <laughs> home, um, uh, uh, like housewarming gift, like that's the book that I would give cause it, it'll, it's perfect for that. But the, the other one I want to recommend is called life in the analog age, mm. um, which is by uh, Gabe Soir, who was a storyboard artist for like Dexter's laboratory, Ren and Stimpy. And he's been doing a, a web comic just about life growing up in, um, and uh, it's just the, the coloring on this thing is just so beautiful and I love the art and uh, he put together two books which you can order as like minis or you can get them as um, uh, ebooks for like um, the big collection is $5 of the stuff that's on the site it's like 99 cents for a, a, like a 12 page I think it's like a 12 page mini that's exclusive to the book and they're just really fun to read and really beautiful and um, like for, like I don't know who his intended audience is, but I I love them and I know that they're perfect for kids. So, and it's lifeinthealogage dot com. Thank you, Eric Closter, in the chat for finding that for us. Wow, this is really great looking stuff. Oh my gosh, it's really great looking stuff. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for that, Ryan. Ryan Estrada, any final thoughts on what you gave us today? Uh, we got to close this one out. I, and I want to give you a chance for final thoughts. And also, are you going to be doing any appearances, any events that you wanted to point people at if they're in Busan, South Korea? Um, I do stand-up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Busan is listening. Um, but, uh, yeah, my, I guess my final thoughts are just um, just – learn about automation. I mean, there's so, I wish I had more time because there's yeah. so many other things I wanted to talk about. I ran out of time, but just anything you can do on a computer that doesn't involve creative thinking, you can set up either Photoshop actions or automator to basically treat it like, like you've hired an assistant. Yeah, yeah, digital assistant. We've got a winner announced in the chat for the $50 uh, collection from uh, the whole story, and that's D. Jusan. 
Uh, Eric Kloster posted the link into the chat client, and I'll I'll be be sure to share that with you, Ryan. So uh, you can get her contact information. So congratulations, DJ San of Gray Is, a fantastic manga that we also, I, I need to work on getting a copy for the library's collection as well. Well, Aaron does. Erin's yes. the selector, everybody. <laughs> this is the lady yeah. you want to know Just at the library. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like we did an episode a while back with Aaron, uh, Sharon Iverson called Know Your Selector. And it was, it was trying to explain to cartoonists that you don't just walk in to the circulation desk and go, hey, I got a book you want. Yeah. No, you actually have to know the selector. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it helps to be nice to the selector mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but we're lucky I, we've got patrons who are constantly giving me good suggestions too and alerting yeah. me to things so ask and we'll buy and uh, we've got some events coming up at the Ann Arbor District Library as well that I want to make a quick shout out about um, because man oh man a lot of comic stuff mm -hmm. is happening this summer Summertime, yeah. I, I know I mean and so yeah uh, tonight comics fundamentals class begins at the Pittsfield branch at the Ann Arbor District Library 6 to 8 p.m. it's a comics class for grown-ups a uh, six-week course where we're going to do a lot of different kinds of learning strategies to uh, get you under the hood of making comics, and maybe you'll walk out with a finished book at the end. The Comic Book Academy is every Tuesday for the next five weeks. Uh, started yesterday at the time of this recording. And then we've got some uh, extra visits coming up in August, which we'll make noise about in future Comics Great episodes. But... Uh, uh, we've got some Skype visits coming in, and we've got some more physical, uh, more cartoonists like coming out from uh, different areas to lead some more workshops. Where there's a lot of stuff going. Yeah, on. no, summertime is the best. The kids are just dying, and adults to get all of that undivided attention with you and uh, <laughs> <learn> more <laughs> and other cartoonists. Yeah, and and then one more thing I wanted to point out. We mentioned um, Lean Into Art earlier. Uh, we have a new class on the Lean Into Art site called uh, Rack My Book with Tyler James, where it's like how to get your comic. Uh, carried in different various stores. Uh, that's happening on July 25th, and you can find more information at leanintoart.com slash workshops. And then I'm going to work with Ryan. I'm going to start talking to you, Ryan, about doing this automation uh, uh, workshop you did today as a full-on, maybe like two-hour, two-session class where we can cover all of that stuff. So I think it would be great. So... Uh, then the only other thing to say in the meantime is go to the-whole-story.com. You have until July 23rd to pay what you want for this amazing collection of comics. And thank you, everybody, who participated in today's giveaway uh, on Twitter. And thank you, Ryan Estrada of ryanestrada.com, for being part of this discussion today. Thanks so much for all the tips. Thanks for having me. And we'll have you on again, I hope so, soon. Uh, and thanks for staying up late. I mean, it's, I think it's like, the, what is it, 2.40 in now your time? <laughs> Impressive! Wow. Yeah, yeah. This guy, this guy. Well, he, yeah. Night owl, though. Maybe already. Well, uh, well, for this month, I'm, I'm not getting much because <laughs> I got to send out everybody's comics. Wow. But we get caught up on your sleep, uh, your sleep deficit next month. Hopefully, after the whole story sale is over. But yeah, people go to the whole story and 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 check it out. There's some amazing stuff there, and we'll be posting. Uh, Ryan will be posting more information about that soon. About. Uh, uh, some audio commentaries come up. And thank you, Aaron Helmrich, for being here. Thank uh, you. Do we want to give out a shout-out to your Twitter handle, or is that a private thing? Um, well, I would if I was actually tweeting. I sort of <laughs> fell off the map. So when I next time, if i okay. back on. Okay, if you get back yeah. on Twitter. Okay. <laughs> Because I don't want you to follow me and then be gravely disappointed at the silence. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. I, in case people <laughs> wanted to ask you questions yeah. about how to get their books in library. Actually, libraries. if you just follow the ADL Twitter feed, That's I'm true. one of the people oh. who's responding and, and getting your replies and stuff now. So oh, cool. use that if you want suggestions or have any questions. I'm on there. And that's at A A D L yeah. on the Twitters. Yep. Okay, so uh, thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening. This show will be archived at comicsaregreat.com slash CAG59. Thank you to Matt Dubay, Tom Smith, and Eric Kloster in the production room for helping put this show together. Thanks to Eli Nyberger and the Ann Arbor District Library for hosting the show and being our sponsor of the show. And uh, thanks again to Ryan Estrada and Alan Aaron Helmerk for being in the studio today. Until next time, everybody, I have been Jersey Droz of comicsaregreat.com and Jersey on Twitter. Okay, bye. And now we just all talk together while the...